Hi. Today we'll be reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Right before the book of the Song of Solomon is the book of Ecclesiastes. And we'll be reading from the last chapter, chapter 12. And we'll read verse 7, 13, and 14. Let us start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we sure do thank you for the time again that we have with you, that we're going to be in your word. And Father, I pray that as we look at your word that you'll speak to us. Father, may you change our minds. May you show us our focus where it needs to be. Father, just show us what our passion should be. We know that it should be for you. Father, I just pray that uh, your spirit will work in our hearts and in our minds. And we'll pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7, verses 13 and 14. And in verse 7 it says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Then skip down to verse 13. It says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You know, it's so easy to get wrapped up in the things of this world. Whether it be work, hobbies, could be politics, money, current events, sinful activities. And when people find themselves so caught up in something that absorbs their time and energy, and it has nothing to do with God, the whole book of Ecclesiastes pretty much tells us that it's vanity. You know, you look at Solomon, and Solomon let himself do whatever his mind set to do. It had nothing to do with God. If he wanted to do something, he did it. If he wanted to partake of something, he did. Whatever he wanted, that's what he did. And, and as he's going through the book, you know, he's showing us that living a life like that with no attention to God, it's vanity. I mean, it's pretty much useless. And when we look here in the Bible, it shows us how fragile life really is. And, and it also shows us what our concentration should be set on, where our focus should be. And so as we look at this, these three verses, I want to show you a few things that hopefully it will encourage us to make sure we put our focus upon Jesus and keep it there. The first thing I want you to realize is that death is inevitable. Death is in evil. Nobody's going to escape it. Unless the rapture happens, sooner or later we're all going to die. Our bodies will give out. Uh, looking at verse 7 again, it says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. You know, the dust will return to the earth, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Nobody knows when they'll die. I mean, I would love to know the, the exact day, the exact hour, the exact minute that I was going to die. But many of us don't have that convenience. But we're all going to die. And we know that it's, it's, it's inevitable. Since this is the case, should we not get the most out of life? Man, I'm one of those that believe that God gave us things in our life to enjoy. And we should enjoy them. You know, whether it be your children, whether it be your friends, whether it be your family, whatever the case, I believe that God has given us a life that he expects us to enjoy, and we should enjoy it. But also realize that knowing the dust, which is us, our bodies, will return to the earth, and the Spirit shall return unto God, who gave it. So, it's all going to happen. We're all in the same boat. One day our bodies will give out, and we will die. And the part that says every soul returns to God, I, I think that's important for us to ponder too, because, you know, as saved individuals, we know that one day when we die, we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Um, keep your finger marked there, but go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 10. The book of, in New Testament, the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, look at verse number 10. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, look at verse number 10. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So as Christians, we know that we have the luxury of one day standing before the judgment seat of Christ. It's not to be judged for sin. It's not to be judged for hell. But it's to be judged for a reward. The, the gifts that we may be given so that we can give them back to Christ. But not only the saved, realizing that we'll have to give an account, every soul returns to God. But we know that the saved will return before the judgment seat of Christ. But those that have never put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, their soul will return to God also. You know, people say, well, if they don't have Christ in their life, then they don't have God. So, how, how, therefore, how could their soul return to Christ? Because the unsaved, their souls will return to God the Father. And the sad thing is, when they stand before Him, it will be for eternal punishment. Um, finger mark there still. Let's go to the book of Revelations now. Revelations chapter 20. Very real truth here. Revelations, last book of the Bible. Revelations chapter 20, look at verse 11. Revelations chapter 20, look at verse number 11. The last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation chapter 20, beginning in verse 11. And it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, that's God the Father, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was no place, no found, there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death, hell, and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. See, a person that has never put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, that has nothing to do with God, that doesn't want to hear about religion whatsoever, the sad fact is that when their body gives out, when they die here on this earth, their soul will return to God the Father at the great white throne. And then and there, they shall be judged for their sins. And the sad thing is, they will receive an eternal punishment. We should make the most out of life, knowing that death is inevitable, knowing that God has blessed us. We should take advantage and, and enjoy the things that we have in our life, but realize that we're all in the same boat, that our bodies will return to the dust, but our spirits shall return unto God who gave it. So, first of all, understand death is inevitable. Second thing I want you to realize, going back to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. Second thing I want you to realize, Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, look at verse 13. And it says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. See, the second thing I want you to realize is that when you look at verse 13, it puts our lives into perspective. It puts our lives into perspective. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. And what Solomon is saying, he's saying, this is what life is is all about. And, and then he's going to list some things, but he's trying to grab our attention, knowing that he lived a life of excess, a life of extravagance. Now he's come to a point in his life where he's saying, hey, learn from my mistakes. Learn from what I've gone through in my life and understand this, that we have to come to that point of, of realizing what life is all about. Solomon has done everything under the sun. He's lived a life of excess, he lived an extravagant lifestyle, and now he is saying he has discovered what life is really about. What, what, what the, the key to what life is all about. You know, so many times people say, well, what is my purpose of life? What is the reason for life? And Solomon is about to hatch it open for us. Going back to verse 13 of Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Again, he says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. And then the first thing he said, he says, fear God. Fear God. He's saying, respect God Almighty. You know, realizing that God is a God of love. 
And God went through great lengths to show us his love, realizing that, that he loved us with such a passion. He loved us with such a, a, a fervent and, and just incredible type of love that he was willing to give his son to die a horrible death in our place. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And you say, well, was it so bad that he let his son be born here on this earth? Well, it was bad. He left heavens to be born here on this earth. But the, whole, the, the, the really hard part about it is that when Jesus Christ died upon the cross, he died in our stead. And, and God had already set uh, the price for sin. There had to be the shedding of blood. Without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission of sins. And so that's how uh, we were to be atoned. That our, our sins had to be forgiven through the shedding of blood. And even though God had set the, the mandate saying, Hey, there has to be the shedding of blood if, if there is to be the, sin, the taking away of sin. He went a step further and he said, You know what? I'll let my son do it. The only one that could be perfect, the only one that was and still is perfect, and he let him be taken to the cross for us. That was God's love. So understand that God is a God of love. And, and, and to understand what life is all about, I think it begins when we start to understand that God is a God of love, that he's a God of amazing love. And we respect him for that love. But also realize that God is not only a God of love, He's a God of judgment. See, hell is judgment for sin. I mean, we know that hell was created for Satan and all of those angels that followed him. But it expands daily because of man's failure to accept God, to accept Jesus Christ, to accept what was done upon the cross. If you're watching this, let there be no doubt in your mind the the extent of God's love for you. That he, he sat there and he had to watch his son be beaten. His son went through great misery just so that he could be taken to the cross and humiliated. And he allowed that for you. Whoever's watching right now, he allowed it for you. Because that's the extent of his love. He severely loves us. But on the other side of that, realize that God is a God of judgment. And, and I believe that that judgment is there because he's made this possible that, hey, if a person would just accept Christ, you know, believe in your heart, knowing that Christ died for you, and if you'll just accept what he did upon the cross and ask him into your life and ask him to forgive your sins... You'll be saved, but hell was set up, and I believe that part of God's judgment is because people may know about it, but they don't take advantage of it. You know, if God is a God of judgment, then understand that God is a God of love, and he went through great lengths to show us his love. But if a person rejects that love, rejecting Jesus Christ is rejecting God's love, then hell is your punishment. Going back to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, look at verse 13 again. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the matter. This is what life is all about. He says, fear God, respect God. And then he says, and keep his commandments. You say, well, what are his commandments? This book right here. Holy Bible. That's God's commandments to us. And he expects us to read it. You know, daily I read from my Bible. Daily I open it up. And I read from it. You say, well, why do you do that, Kenny? Because I want to know what God's commandments are for me. If I have entered into a relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ, and I've accepted that salvation, then I'm curious. You know, if God loves me, and, and He puts no strings upon that love, I want to grow deeper with Him. And the way I can do that is by finding out what God expects of me. I want to find out His commandments for my life. I want to know what His wants are, what His desires are for my life, but I also want to know what He doesn't want me to do. The Bible says keep His commandments. If we want to know what life is all about, it's respecting God, but also growing deeper in our relationship with Him. Because once you read the Bible and you start to find out His commandments, it helps you to grow closer to Him. 
It's just like any people, uh, a couple that's married, a man and a wife, when they're married, you know, in order to grow closer to them, you have to find out more about them. And when you find out more about them, you understand what their likes, what their dislikes are. And it allows you to keep from doing those things they dislike or doing a whole lot more of the things they like. And in, in doing so, you please them, but you grow closer to them. And the same is true in our relationship with, with God, with Jesus Christ. Finding out what his likes, what his dislikes are, doing those things he loves and he likes, but making sure you don't do those things that he dislikes, that he doesn't want us to do. See, if you want to have your life and for something or someone to put your life in perspective, that's what Solomon doing right, is doing right here. He's saying, hey, let's, let's figure out what life is all about. He's saying, number one, fear God, respect God. But then he says, keep his commandments. And look how he uh, ends verse 13. He says, fear God, keep his commandments. And then it says, for this is the whole duty of man. This is what we're supposed to be doing on this life. Fearing God and keeping his commandments. You say, well, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun. But once you grow deeper in your relationship with Christ, you understand that that is fun. That it becomes a joy in your life to be able to live a life that is righteous with Jesus Christ. This is the whole duty of man. You want something simple? You want some kind of purpose in your life? Respect God. Keep his commandments. But the third and last thing I want you to see going back still in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, look at verse 14. It says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. See, the last thing I want you to realize that Solomon's trying to show us, not only did he, is he showing us that life, that death is inevitable, not only is he saying, hey, the purpose of life is to respect God and keep his commandments, but the, the way that he, he, he ends Ecclesiastes and he sums it all up, he wants us to realize that we will give an account of our lives. There will be a day that every person will give an account of their life. You know, for the unsaved, we know that it's at the great white throne judgment and, and it only ends in misery. It only ends in hell. But for us as Christians, we will have to give an account of our lives. And and here he says, bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. See, you can live your life and you can have your little secret sins and you say, well, no one knows about them and no one will ever find out about them. Guess what? God already has. God knows everything about you. And there will come a time that when your body gives out and you stand before Christ, you will have to give an account of your life. Um, keep your finger marked there. Go to the New Testament again, Romans chapter 14, verse 12. Look at Romans chapter 14, verse 12. The book of Romans chapter 14, look at verse number 12. Romans chapter 14, look at verse number 12. And this is, here, here it is, Paul writing, he, and he tells us, and he's writing to believers. So in Romans chapter 14, verse 12, it says, So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. You can't escape it. And you know, if we, ha we have this knowledge, and the great thing about the Bible is that it fills in the blanks. It lets us know what we have to expect. And if we are living this life, knowing that we're supposed to respect God, knowing that we're supposed to keep His commandments, and then knowing that at the end of it all that we're going to have to give an account for it, shouldn't it make us want to make sure that we're doing exactly what God wants us to do? See, we have this knowledge that we are God's children. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you are a child of God. Secondly, we know that death is inevitable. We're all going to die one day unless the rapture occurs. Our bodies will give out. You know, as you grow older, you start to experience experience all these aches, these pains. Hey, that's the body. The body dying. You know, we're born as a baby, and then we grow into these adults. But somewhere along the way, our body starts to regress. We start to go downhill. We start to feel the aches, the pains. We know that this body is going to give out eventually. We have that knowledge. 
But also we have the knowledge because of Solomon here in the book of Ecclesiastes to realize that our purpose, we have purpose on this earth to live a life for Christ, to fear God, keep his commandments. But lastly, knowing that we will give an account of our lives should strive to make us, we should strive to make it a kind of life where we're not going to be embarrassed when we stand before Christ. Oh, some of us will be embarrassed. I don't think there's going to be anybody that's not in some, some small way embarrassed about their lives. Because I don't believe that any human being fully lives that life for Christ like they should. See, people are wasting their lives on things that will not matter when they're dead. Hey, majority of things that we do right now, when we die, it's not going to matter one way or the other. We'll be forgotten about. Things that we've done in our life will be forgotten about. Very rarely are people remembered unless they've done some major big thing. Most people, sooner or later, their life is over and things will be forgotten about them. But see, we have this wonderful knowledge that things that are done for Christ, those are the things that will last. Those are the things that will matter in eternity. When you share your faith with someone, with somebody and they come to the point where they say, hey, I want this Jesus in my life, and they invite Christ in their life, right then and there, you did that for Christ, that's going to last. That's going to matter. Because that person will have heaven as their home too. You know, we, we have such the privilege of, of hearing from people like Solomon. You know, the thing about it, when he became king, he asked God for wisdom. And at that moment, a person would probably say, wow, he's really going to live his life for God. He's really going to do great things for God. But Solomon strayed. And we know he strayed because of the, the strange women that he was with. And they, they f made his heart follow after false gods. And, and, and because of that, he lived a life full of vanity wasted when he could have done amazing things for God. But the truth is that human beings today, we're still on the same ship. You know, here we are, we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, but so many times we waste our life on things in this earth because we're not doing them for Christ. If we would just get our focus upon Jesus and live a life for Jesus, how our ending would be so different. How many people's lives would be different in the end if we would just keep our focus upon Jesus Christ? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we sure do love you. Father, we thank you for the time in your word. And Father, I pray that something was said or read, Lord, that will uh, make a difference in our lives. Father, help us to become more focused on you and help us to live the life that you want us to live. Father, we'll ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hope this finds you well. I hope you're still uh, in the Word of God. I hope you're reading it daily. And just because we're not in the church house doesn't mean that we can't still be the church. Check up on one another. Pray for one another. Each and every other person in the church needs your prayer. So be faithful to pray. Be faithful to touch a base with people, make sure they're doing okay, and I promise you that when all this is over, we'll be stronger for it. Thank you.